We've got Rodney from Ride Tech here to help us with some of the technical stuff. And he's going to mark the center line on the axle. Then we're going to get this thing out of here and start putting the floor bar in. So we'll mark the frames before we even take out the rear end. Otherwise, you get ahead of yourself and you got to bring the box back and set it back on, and it just gets to really be tricky doing it that way. So we'll spend the time, mark everything up before we take out the rear end. We're marking the axle center line using a, a straight edge and a level. This particular truck, we're putting the axle center line right back into the stock location. One of the beautiful things about doing a weld in four link is you can put the rear end where you want it. Now, uh, side to side, usually measure off uh, the brake flange, the axle flange, you know, to make sure you're centered. This is probably one of the most time consuming parts of the whole ordeal right here is getting the rear end set. We'll set the rear end side to side, front to back, and we'll set the pinion angle. We use a digital angle finder to set our uh, pinion angle. Our frame is raked a couple degrees, so we're factoring that into all of our measurements. The angle of the frame is personal preference. Uh, some guys like them level, some guys like a little, you know, two to three degree rake. The main thing you gotta keep in mind is everything's gotta be based off of that angle. You wanna set your pinion angle parallel with your motor transmission combination. I say measure, measure three times weld once. And I like to tack the rear end in and then go back and measure again. You can't measure too much when you're doing this step. We've got our uh, front brackets and our axle brackets, our panhard bracket, shock bracket. We've got our four bars, which is actually what we're looking for because we want to set our bars. Bushings have already been pressed in, so you don't have to mess around with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set all of our bars the same. We got this one set. Now we're going to set the rest to match. Easiest way to do that: grab two bolts out of the kit. Set one end on. There you go. Mock, mocking the side up here. Then we'll take it and uh, hold it up onto the truck to get an idea where our, our frame uh, boxing plate's gonna go on the inside of the frame rail. We mounted the, the bars on the inside of the frame rail on this truck using 3 16 plate to box the frame so we didn't have to modify the running board. The rear end doesn't care if the, pair, the bars are inboard or outboard. It just doesn't care at all. Now we'll set the rear axle mount. We're gonna put it level with the world. Once we get it set, then all we gotta do is put our bars back in and swing our front mount up. All this is is a long hose clamp and it holds up into place and we can adjust it so we get our angles right, get everything set, then we can tack it onto the axle. It's measured three times, four times, six times, ten times. Once you get that right, the welding stuff, boy, that doesn't take any time at all. Swing her up there, put her level with the bottom. I'm just checking the bar angle, see where we're at. We're uh, one and a half degrees down. I like to be zero to two down. That's, that's beautiful. Living large. One of the common questions we get is, can you shorten the rear bars? Yes, you can. Uh, we really don't recommend it because the, the longer bar will give you a better performing suspension. We still have to put our upper shock mount in. We've got to put our panard bar in. But until we get our C notches in place, we won't know exactly where that's going to go. Other than that, it's just a matter of finishing our welding on our box plates, finishing our welding on our brackets, and things are looking really good. Back to shop, uh, Ty got the C notches put in. So we're ready to go ahead and link up the, the rest of the suspension and put the, the shock cross member in. Now, we want at least three inches of compression travel on the axle. And to get that on this truck, we're gonna to have to do a C-notch. 
basically you're, you're raising the frame rail up to give more axle clearance, plus keep the strength in the frame so you still got a usable vehicle. We had welded the rear end immediately to the bottom of the frame. And when I put in the C notches, I left all of that in place. So none of our data has changed at all. So our first step is going to be to go ahead and put the panard bar in there. We're going to have to establish um, where our rear end bracket goes. Panhard bar at ride height, you want it level because you want to, you're going to be working on an arc. You're going to have a little bit of side to side movement. By putting it level, you're going basically moving the same amount on the arc. The, the main job of the panhard bar is locating the rear end. And if you got your panhard bar level, you're moving the same direction on compression and rebound. Now, the longer the bar, the longer the arc, which in turn gives you less side-to-side -side movement. Beautiful thing about our tubing that we use, it's inch and eight two one nine wall, which is direct thread for three quarter sixteen. So, all you got to do is cut the length and re-tap it. Now, if you have to bend the bar a little bit to clear some stuff, that's not such a bad thing either. What we got here is a Ridetex Universal uh, Shockwave Cross Member. It comes with a tube, comes with the, the frame mounts, and it comes with the, the lower shock mount and the shock mount for the bridge. Now, these brackets, we're going to use them like this, but they could go several different ways. You could put them like that. You could put it like that. that I mean. You know, sky's the limit. We've taken a flat piece of steel and put the holes in it basically at the, that's the, our ride height of our, our shock we're, we're putting on here. So we're, we're just gonna use that for mock-up. I mean, it's something anybody can make at home. It's just a one inch wide flat piece of steel. We got a half inch hole in the top and a five eighths for the bottom. Just uh, flip it up in place and it should basically locate our upper mount. Your specific application will determine a lot what you can do on the shock angle. Uh, but you got to keep in mind the more you lean the shock over, the less effective the shock and the spring are. We don't recommend going over 20 degrees, 25 at the most. We're putting a uh, 8000 series shockwave on the back of here. An 8000 series shockwave is five inches in diameter. So you got to make sure you got at least two and a half inches from the rear end, which we're three and a quarter off the rear end. So we're, we're plenty good, but uh, you gotta make sure you got the room so you don't rub. The billet lower mount that we use gives you some uh, flexibility on, on mounting, plus it spaces the, the shock off the rear end to give you clearance for the air spring or the coilover. We, we're setting this truck up for shockwave, but we just uh, we put the coilovers on here to show you. It's the same setup either way, whether you're doing shockways or coilovers. Uh, they both, these, we're doing a five inch stroke on this truck, so they got the same extended, compressed, and, and uh, ride height dimensions. Some of the, the benefits of a four link is uh, rear end control. Uh, you won't have axle wrap, or you'll get axle wrap with lee springs where you want with a four link. You got, uh, better pinion control and then plus you can also since you're since you're welding in the suspension you can put it where you want it